So the task for today is predict if somebody will accept the deposit from the, from the bank. No? This is a usual installation uh, of the libraries. And this is the attribute information. So I think it's uh, important that we have a look. And maybe you have already, I guess, uh, of what you think will influence more. So we have age, job, marital state, so you can have married, divorced, single, education, default, means that it has a credit in default, no? that is balance, so how much is the average uh, yearly amount in the bank, housing, it has a, a housing loan, and loan if it has another loan that is not housing. Then all the information that we have from this uh, data set is uh, last time we contacted uh, this person in this campaign, how did we contact? It was with telephone, with mobile phone, or we didn't know. And when it was, and how long the conversation uh, took. And other attribute is number of uh, contacts we did. Uh, during this campaign, number of data passed after the client uh, was last contacted, number of contacts performed. So this looks like it's, it's going to influence. And the previous outcome. So if you have a previous uh, campaign, did the client last time accept what you offered to him or her? Um, basically, we need to, to predict if the client subscribed or not. So did he accept the offer? So this is the data. For data preparation, what I did is changing uh, like the default housing loan. There was the features are yes or no. So you see like a plenty of this, no, no, no. And I changed this to zero to one. And for the month, I changed to numeric. So we have a bit more, more clean data set. And I wanted to show you how the data looks like. So Age looks like a, I don't know. It's a, there is a drop here when people is over 60. I don't know if they just uh, take the the money and run away or I don't know. <laughs> Balance is a yeah. It's not. It's a quite focused there. Uh, campaign duration. I mean, you have days uh, you expect to be everywhere. No? So this is how the data distributed. And for me, the interesting part is this thing that we are supposed to predict. And you see already that the majority of people don't don't take the offer. No? So what I did is for every category, I put on the y-axis what is the probability of uh, of somebody taking the offer sorted by different categories. So if you do by job. It looks like students, they usually take it in comparison to the others. So it's, it's sorted by adoption. But this can be a bit misleading because uh, there are very few students in comparison to the others. So in this one is the count. So how many you have for every of those? So it's interesting to get some insight. Singles uh, is it better than divorce, and divorce are better than married. So married, uh, possibly they have less money, I guess. <laughs> and uh, but it's maybe less representative for divorce, they are less. No? Education, uh, you have uh, te tertiary, no? education, secondary, primary, and unknown. So higher education looks like it's uh, is the winner for this. Default is that, well, if people default uh, the bank account is uh, unlikely to take a deposit, uh, but there are it's a bit uh, misleading because in reality there are very few people no, who default, at least in this bank. Housing, it makes sense. If you have a loan for a house, maybe you're not so much interested in, uh, in making another deposit, or if you have a loan, it's a similar thinking. And contact looks like it's more effective to use the mobile phone than the landline or unknown, I don't know what they mean because they didn't elaborate when giving the data. Maybe it's that they don't know the number or I don't know. Uh, month, 
is a looks like March, December, September, and, and October are the winners. But uh, it's again misleading. Is that uh, here you have very few contact made, no? so you need to take this uh, with a bit of salt. This is really good. Previous outcome. So if you manage to sell something to this guy, do it again. So, <laughs> but uh, there are not so many person who last time bought. <laughs> so and this for the categorical features. What I did is for the numerical features, I create a, a heat map with the correlation. And uh, this Y is what we are trying to predict. And well, it's correlated to itself, obviously, but uh, the other is almost no correlation except this one. So this one corresponds to the duration of the call. So that looks like a duration is good. And it's the same information. Yeah. So to train uh, some decision trees and so I need to prepare the data because uh, if you say, for instance, my job is a consultant or management or whatever, uh, machine learning cannot take this input. So we are encoding this information uh, using on uh, one hot encoding. And for instance, if we go by, by education, we have secondary, tertiary, unknown, and this thing. Well, you see that everything is set to zero, except one for the one who corresponds. So the same thing for for contact. And uh, it's, a, it's a way to encode this uh, categorical information. This is uh, some, I, I will skip uh, all this, but it's basically to prepare the data and to split the data into two sets, one for training and another testing for evaluating the, the performance of the model. And this to get the confusion matrix, the the precision, the recall, F1, okay, that we discussed before, that we can tell which one is, is better. So baseline, that's interesting. What I did is I create, it's called a dummy classifier. And what it does is that it generates random numbers between zero and one, so only zero and one with the same distribution as it has uh, input data. So is if I have no idea, if I have no input, if I only know the output, what uh, kind of error can I get? No? Just predicting randomly. And in this case, this information we get. So we have precision like 11%, recall 11 in the for the training, for the testing is similar. So really bad, no? And this is the confusion matrix. So we are true positive is 139. So it's really a minority of the cases because in reality there are like uh, 1,200. <coughs> and in addition, we get all this wrong. So it's quite bad uh, prediction. So let's do some machine learning and let's try if we can improve on, on this baseline. So I will take a tree but uh, notice that it's not regularized, so I just said, give me a tree. And you notice that the precision and the recall on F1 is everything one, so 100% everything. Because it created one node for every prediction. So it's totally overfitting. When we run it on the test data, you see that uh, it's not as good. So, but still it's, it's doing a, a fine job. It has like a like 50% uh, precision. So you need to call 1,300 person and out of each, half of this person will buy. So it's quite okay. And recall is about 50% uh, also. So meaning that there will be another 692 person that would have otherwise bought, but you're not identify them. And we can also check the feature importance. So we have the like, duration, balance, day, previous outcome success, this kind of thing. Uh, I sorted them by importance, and you see that they play a big role. So the next thing I want to do is to have regularization. And I said that I want a maximum depth of, uh, of five. And run again, and I see that is uh, improving the, the precision. 
but the recall is uh, is a bit worse. So it's not much of a difference. I mean, it has the error in a different place, but it's not improving too much. So I decided to go and find which will be the optimal uh, depth. So I ran this script and said, try 40 different depth and tell me which one works best. And here what I'm plotting is the F score that combines precision and recall. And it tells me that the maximum depth 30 is the one that maximizes the F1 score. So if I run it again with max depth 13, what I get is a precision which is better than 50%. So if I call people is more than half of them will reply yes. And the recall is about 50% also in the during the testing set. So half of the people will not be identified as potential buyers or adopters of the deposit. Another interesting thing I want to mention is this class weight balance because we have a very imbalanced data set. So in our data, only 10% of the people take the deposit. So we can uh, instruct the decision tray to account for this information and take this into account. And the way to do it is uh, to say, balance this for me, because it's imbalanced. And there we get even, uh, and we use the same depth. So we get uh, good results as well. The recall, you see the precision is a bit worse, but in exchange, we get a very good recall. So we identify many more people that will potentially adopt it. And we can play the same trick and say, find which is the best depth for balance case, which is 13 as well. So now we go, let's try with random forest. This was all the decision trees. Let's see what's the difference here. If we use now the balance and we use 50 trees, maximum depth 13, we see that uh, we have a very good recall. So we identify 75% of the people who will take the deposit, but uh, we need to call like a, a double of people that uh, we will need, which I think is a good improvement anyhow, because uh, if we call uh, don't know, 10 people and five will take it, it's much better than it was before that you need to call 10 to get one. So it's already very good, I will say. Something I did is let's do a small three, a small tree, with a only three as a maximum depth, and see how it looks like. And I don't know if you can see there. Yeah, it looks <coughs> quite okay. And what you see is that what is influencing more is the duration of the call. So if you manage to get the person talking more than 250 seconds you have already 71% probability uh, yeah, uh, probability that he will say yes. And if you manage more than 648 seconds, then you're almost there. So <laughs> at the end, you never know if uh, this is a cause or effect, no? Because maybe the only the person who talk are the ones that are interested. So, uh, I put this comment that I like, the correlation implies causation. But I will say that <laughs> even <laughs> if correlation doesn't imply causation, it doesn't hurt to not be in the first saying goodbye. <laughs> this is a, a, I have a very small uh, thing on top, is that this is a bit, uh, uh, we did uh, cheating a bit in the sense that we use information from this campaign. So, because uh, this information on the duration said how many minutes or how many seconds you were talking in this campaign. But in reality, what we really would like to do is predict for the next campaign where we don't have any data. So, we cannot use the duration of uh, which communication type we do doing during this campaign because we don't know yet the day, a month, and so. So it's as easy as removing these features 
and building a tree. Oh, sorry, I did a mess. We're building a, a, a this will be a, we build a tree, and we get this performance. As you see, it's uh, much worse in the sense that we only identify half of the people and only 25, 24% uh, are correct. So you need to call many more people to get a yes. And if we ma uh, optimize to do the, the right regularization, we get better numbers. So precision is 38%. So you need to call like one third of a person and we cover 40%. So 60% you will not be able to identify. And this is where the random forests uh, really shine because this is with the tree. But if we do the same exercise with random forest, you see that we have a similar precision, but we cover many more people. So we identify most of the ones that will be able to, to accept this offer, even if we need to call uh, many more people. So we get like a one in out of three, which anyhow is much better than one in 10. Uh, I wanted to discuss also a bit of a validation set because uh, we uh, did also some, some cheating here in the sense that uh, what we use is the same set, the training set, to check what is the optimal depth or to check uh, if it is the uh, best uh, training uh, decision trees or random forest or whatever. This shouldn't be done like that. The way to do it properly is that you have a training set, a validation set, and testing set. So the training set you use for training the model, the testing set you use to check uh, how this will behave in the future, so these things are as they are, and the validation set you use it to optimize the hyperparameters. So hyperparameters are the parameters of the machine learning model. So like how many trees you use in the random forest, or what is the maximum depth you take, these kind of things. So this, everything from my side, unless you have any question or if you want to try something else.